Hi there, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jake, and I'm pleased to be your host for today's Get to Know Journalism session as part of Ryerson's virtual open house, which is taking place from November 9th to 13th and 16th to 20th. There are many sessions taking place across uh, the rest of this week, so we encourage you to visit our website and register for any other sessions that might interest you. So to start, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the land on which Ryerson stands. Toronto is in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. So this is a land acknowledgement that we read at the beginning of important on-campus events and meetings. And even though we're not currently on Ryerson's campus, it's still important to us to acknowledge this land as a small part of our commitment to uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and reconciliation. So Ryerson has shifted to an essential services model to help present, prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. We've put together a series of virtual sessions in order to share information and connect with you. Ryerson's working diligently to provide students with, a, with fulsome experiences while maintaining the health and safety of our community. So right before we get started, a few Zoom, Zoom housekeeping tips. We encourage you to ask questions. We have many faculty and staff members here to answer your questions. So to do so, use the Q&A pod at the bottom of your Zoom window. Click the Q&A bubble to open the dialogue window and type your questions throughout the presentation. If you're having any audio or video issues, feel free to flag it in the Q&A pod and one of our staff members will assist you. You may, you may rearrange the screen in any way that works best for you. And note that rearranging your screen doesn't impact the way that others are viewing this presentation. This presentation will be presented with closed captioning to ensure accessibility. So if you require closed captioning, please select that option at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Also note that recordings of all virtual open house sessions will be available on our website later on. Um, so we would like to know who's joining us. So I'm going to launch a poll um, and we'll wait a, a moment for results to come in there. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd just sort of like to get a, get a grip on who's joining us today. So whether you're looking to apply for 2021, if you're a parent of a student, if you're looking to apply sometime in the future, um, that's all really great information for us to know. So I'll leave that up for a few more seconds while some of those uh, results come in, but I'd now like to, like to introduce Adrian uh, from the Department of Journalism to start the presentation. Uh, Adrian, take it away. Thanks, bud. Really appreciate the intro. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Adrian Ma, and I'm a professor at the Ryerson School of Journalism. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to hang out with you for the next little while. Uh, I'm going to do a little overview as to why I personally think, uh, you know, if, if you're interested in journalism, uh, consider coming to Ryerson, because I think we've got a lot of uh, a lot of really awesome things going on. Um, so Sorry, Adrian, uh, I'm just going to interrupt you yeah. real quick. Oh, never mind. The, the whole window was up. All right, I'll go away. Goodbye. <laughs> No worries, man. Thanks for appreciate it. Um, yes, and then I'll be around to answer questions. And I believe my colleague Janice Neal is coming as well to uh, answer any questions you may have. And, uh, you know, really um, something we, we're at the school, we are very professional, we're very, uh, we take our work seriously, but we really do, um, you know, want to be an interactive, engaging school. And so feel free to ask me any question you might have, uh, anything whatsoever, okay, I'll do my best to answer it. I always think it's really helpful to start with a basic question. What is journalism? After all, questions are the foundation of what journalism is. So on the one hand, it's kind of straightforward. Journalism is the process of gathering, assessing, creating, and presenting news and information. And we see this kind of information expressed in so many ways. You know, you've got newspapers, you've got magazine articles, you read books. Uh, I'm sure you still watch television, you listen to radio. Increasingly, it's about digital content. So we've got online news, podcasts, what you see on social media, and newsletters are a big thing again. I've got like seven or eight subscriptions to uh, different newsletters uh, in my inbox. So there's all sorts of information and content um, you know, being created. And that's a, that's a really big aspect of what journalism is. Um, however, it's much more than just about presenting information. After all, when it comes down to it, anyone can present information. It's, it's about the quality of that information, what we do with that information, and what is, what, is, what is the power of that information. And as a journalist, you have a lot of power. Um, one of the most iconic reporters of all time is Edward R. Murrow, um, who was in, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, was, was, was a, a, an American journalist who really, really pushed the government um, to, to remain accountable. He said that a nation of sheep will beget We'll, we'll beget a government of wolves. And I really love that quote because it really speaks to one of the key powers journalism has, which is to hold the powerful accountable. Um, you know, these are just 
cover shots and, and front page stories of just some of the you know, dozens, if not hundreds uh, of, of examples of when journalists cracked a really big uh, you know, investigation that led to um, governments, uh, corporations, institutions being exposed for corruption, um, for malfeasance. Um, it's, a, it's a real, uh, there's a real watchdog spirit to journalism where if people are in power, um, you know, they, they have a responsibility to society to, to wield that power in, 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 a, in a rightful way. And journalists are one of those uh, examples of people that are, are holding those, those, those individuals accountable. Um, journalism also has the power to amplify the voices of those that are often marginalized. So for uh, people you know, in, in the margins of society, uh, marginalized communities, um, you know, it does give them a platform, a voice, a, a collective ability to point out injustices in society, things that need to be better, things that we could do better, um, and to really share stories about uh, every, you know, every um, citizens from every walk of life here, not just uh, the select few. And that's a really important role that journalism has. And I think that's also a role that more and more news outlets are, are embracing. Um, ultimately, what I think is most engaging and, and most fun about journalism is its ability to connect us to other people, to other places and other perspectives. That, that also has real power too, the power of storytelling. And I'll show you a couple of examples that were produced at our school um, that really kind of exemplify this and, and speak to the kind of duality of our program where we teach a lot of the uh, kind of traditional journalism skills and also some more innovative um, cutting edge sort of technologies. So here's a, a little clip from a documentary called Hockey Town, which is profiling a small town in Ontario, Stouffville, um, and, and the hockey culture that, that really uh, it permeates throughout that, uh, throughout that town. Let's, let's watch it a minute or two. compare Stouffville to other towns. I mean, what's interesting to me is that we are so ingrained in the hockey here in Stouffville. You see it everywhere. You see the advertisements, you see the kids walking around with their Clippers gear and their Markham Stouffville stars wear and, uh, and parents too. It seemed to be everywhere even before our kids were playing. And so it was kind of assumed when our kids were born that they were going to play hockey. Here we are now and very much immersed in it and um, you see, I don't know if that's why we see it everywhere, because we live it. This is Stouffville. Almost 44,000 people live here. There are three main intersections. There is no mall, no movie theater, but there are two hockey rinks. It is home to both future and former NHL players and five different hockey leagues. Stouffville is growing, but the one thing that hasn't changed is the town's love for the game. This is a common theme in all small Canadian towns. Renee St. Gelais has lived in small towns her whole life. She moved to Stouffville 16 years ago to start a family. Her three kids, Jack, Claire and Henry, all play hockey. From Aiden so that's just kind of one example of uh, a, a documentary um, being produced by our students. And we do te teach documentary filmmaking as, as part of, of the course here. Um, little just interesting known fact, the uh, reporter you saw in that, um, in that video, she just uh, got announced as the new uh, weekend anchor uh, in Saskatoon for CTV. So she's a recent grad and she's uh, done some amazing things. Um, but, you know, just, just like kind of taking that to another level, um, one of my personal research interests is in 360 video and virtual reality. So the last couple of years, I've taken classes to, um, to um, shoot VR documentaries about what life is like there. Um, and so a, a, a quick clip about that. This is Tayo. So what I'm actually doing is controlling uh, where I want to see in the video. And if you actually watch this on a VR headset, it'll kind of just feel like you're right there. But what you see today on this boat ride is very different. And I'll just show you those two examples because I, I think it speaks to our desire to teach those skills that are considered traditional and also to continue pushing, pushing the envelope. Um, I will say though, for, for all the um, positive things that we, we have at our school, we are definitely facing tough times. I will never lie or, or, or try to sugarcoat things. Um, it is a very tough time for the industry. 
Um, it's a heavily disrupted industry with all the traditional business models uh, failing. Um, social media, while it's very capable of spreading good information and of um, uh, of uniting people, it's also uh, very capable of circulating misleading information. So the idea of fake news is something that we've been trying to, to combat. And we've seen the results of that really undermine uh, our faith, uh, public faith in, in um, institutions and in, in democracy even. Um, the lines between marketing and journalism are fuzzier than ever. Sometimes you're looking at a story and you're not sure if it's been produced um, uh, by, by a reporter or by an advertisement uh, firm. Um, you know, as I mentioned, trust in public institutions has been has been eroding. Uh, so we, we want to teach skills that can get you a job. That's a really big priority at our school. But knowing that we are facing a tough time in the industry, we also want students that can come in and help find solutions, um, you know, to help be leaders of the next generation of news media, not, not just to fill jobs. So, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you think critically, act ethically, if, if you really believe in, in the cause of journalism, the, the kind of uh, aspirational uh, aspects of journalism. Um, that's that's a quality we really, really uh, uh, um, recognize and admire and, and really encourage uh, people to have. Uh, and we have a long history of teaching journalists. Um, we've been a full-fledged program since 1951. Today, the school has 550 undergraduate students and 54 graduate students. Uh, we'll get into this a bit more later. If you like, uh, admi uh, for, for 2021 admission, uh, it's grades only. So for the last couple of years, we switched to a grades only model. You don't need a portfolio to apply. Um, I can get into more of those details later on. Here's an overview of the program. Uh, we offer two different degrees. One's an undergraduate degree, that's four years, and one's a graduate degree, that's two years. Now, here's the cool thing. Both programs include options for an internship placement at a reputable media organization. So this includes the CBC, the Globe and Mail, um, Sportsnet, if you're into sports, um, Huffington Post. Uh, we've we've uh, helped place uh, interns all over the place. And uh, it, it, for many of them, it is a really important uh, uh, opening step into the professional workplace. And uh, uh, a really great opportunity and, and something that people look forward to in our program. Um, and then there, we're, we're kind of increasingly looking at uh, broadening what constitutes an internship at our school because we, we're looking at the industry and realizing that, okay, a lot of students uh, don't choose to go into journalism or reporting, and that's totally fine. The skills you develop can take you into marketing, communications, uh, startup businesses. Um, and so increasingly our internship offers reflect that as well. You know, if you find a really cool um, marketing social media opportunity you want to do, you can absolutely pursue that as well for your internship. Uh, so why go to Ryerson? You know, what makes our journalism school uh, a great place to be? I'm going to give you eight reasons. And these are just eight of my own personal reasons, my, eight of my own personal observations. Uh, I'm a teacher here. So yes, I have a clear bias. Like I, I think our, our school is pretty cool. I'm also a graduate of this program. So I've got a bit of a history with the school. So here are my eight reasons. And what I would say is really important is that uh, we are a journalism school located in downtown Toronto. Uh, and I'm not saying this to say that, you know, Toronto is the center of the universe. It is not. Um, however, it is the largest media market in Canada. It is the largest city in Canada. Um, so most Canadian news outlets are headquartered here, you know, from Bell Media to Rogers, the CBC, as well as many any international news bureaus. So the New York Times, BBC Worldwide, BuzzFeed, um, they are headquartered here. They're, they have offices here. So there are opportunities here to work at those places if you like. Um, we're also the most multicultural city in Canada, if not the world, with the most diverse ethnic media market. You do not have to work for a mainstream news outlet if you don't want. If you, if it, if you really care about covering a, a specific community, um, you know, uh, you really want to uh, amplify the voices of those marginalized, as, as we've talked about. There's so many alternative uh, news outlets you could join that, that are, are based here because Toronto is just this massive city with a massively multicultural uh, population. We also have an incredible arts and culture scene, dining, world-class sports and entertainment. Um, so there's plenty of stuff, you know, there's, there's plenty of stuff to do here. But more importantly, as a reporter, you just never run out of things to cover. You know, one day you could be interviewing the CEO of a massive corporation. The next day you're going to be interviewing a, a, a first generation Canadian family who are starting their business and talking about their their struggles and, and where they want to go. Right. There's just so many different kinds of stories you can tell. Uh, the reason number two, I think Ryerson's a great option is hands on training. So 
we are an academically rigorous program. Uh, our, our courses really do prepare you for every aspect of journalism. However, the school historically prides itself in offering practical hands-on training, the idea that you hit the ground running from day one. So in your first semester, you're already conducting interviews, you're writing stories to deadline, you're learning multimedia skills, including video and photography. By year two, you're producing digital news content, you're, you're creating videos for social media, you're producing interactive features, you're learning about data visualization and broadcast television. Once you have those kind of foundational years, the first two years, you kind of learn to do a little bit of everything. And then in years three and four, you really start to pick out the stuff that you're really interested in doing and, and becoming more of an expert at it, right? So you might move into investigative reporting, might wanna make documentaries, if you wanna get into podcasting and so much more. And I will say that this has been a really strange year. Uh, you know, we have moved to an, an online only uh, learning uh, model uh, because of COVID-19. Um, our, our, our hope is to be able to get back into classes as soon as we can, uh, you know, next year when, when uh, public health deems it safe. However, even, even with this, we've really tried to continue to emphasize hands-on training. Um, I'll talk about this more in the Q&A if you like. But we've been experimenting with different uh, virtual technologies, including virtual news studios, um, to try and, you know, simulate that newsroom experience as much as possible and working really hard to do so. So hands-on training will always, always be part of our DNA and I think a really important reason why people come here. And we have so many classes you could take to get that hands-on training. So there's TV studio classes, feature writing, critical and opinion writing. If you want to do podcasting, as I mentioned, um, advanced multimedia. So for instance, I teach that uh, and, and we, we do uh, VR, you know, VR documentary. Uh, if you want to learn about politics, you know, uh, the court system, international journalism, uh, there's just so many options that you could do uh, and, and to fit almost every interest you have, you know, sports, fashion reporting, uh, absolute courses that we have as well. Uh, reason number three, we do try and prioritize small class sizes. So it's a really big part of our experience here. There are some large scale lecture uh, classes that mostly take place in your first couple of years. Um, however, it's nothing near to like, you know, first year psych where it's like a thousand students. It's like at most 140. Um, most of your learning is done in lab settings. So, you know, 15 to 25 students, and you really get to know your instructor. Um, and that's a really cool thing. We, we keep class sizes small so you can get a more dedicated uh, coaching and mentorship experience, uh, which you can only get when you, when you keep class sizes that small. Also helps us ensure that our students get access to studio space, the equipment that they need and resources um, uh, to help them do their assignments and to help them advance their careers. And the really cool thing is that students get to know each other and they get to know their instructors. You know, Ryerson is uh, very much uh, a lot of a lot of students are commuters. It can be hard to, um, you know, to make friends on campus when you're not living uh, in, in, in residence. Um, but we find that with our small program, students really get to know each other. And um, yeah, you might make some friends for life, uh, which is often the case with this industry. It's a very small industry. The contacts you'll make, you know, at university will be ones that you will continue to have. Um, you'll be working with professional level facilities and equipment. So, um, you know, we've got a HD TV studio with robotic cameras. We do live web streaming. There are uh, digital radio labs with isolated sound booths. We have multi-platform newsrooms. Uh, as a student, you'll have access to editing suites. Uh, you'll have access to the uh, EDC, which is the Equipment Distribution Center. So if you need a DSLR camera, if you need lighting equipment, if you need um, stuff to, to do some shooting and recording, uh, you can get it you know, as, as part of being a student here. Here's uh, the fifth reason why I think uh, you know, the RSJ is a pretty cool option, which is that from day one, you can get involved on campus media and start publishing right away. Uh, and, and we have several student managed faculty advised campus news outlets to volunteer for, you know, multiple newspapers, uh, a television uh, studio, a, a, a podcast radio network. Um, you know, you can start pitching ideas and stories and volunteering from day one. And I think this is an awesome opportunity for people because as much as you will learn in class and you will learn a lot, to me, the way to really accelerate your learning and to maximize your time here is to put what you learn in the classroom uh, and, and apply it in a real life setting. And we have real life settings for you to, to work in right away, get clippings, get experience, make contacts, um, make some of the best friends you might ever meet in your life because uh, you know journalism students are curious people, they're interesting people, and they it's, it's, it's a lot about collaboration these days, right? So um, you have so many opportunities to get started and involved from, from day one, and it makes a big difference to your campus experience. 
Uh, something that we offer as well to students is big time connections. This is a byproduct of us being in downtown Toronto, again, surrounded by so many, uh, you know, big media companies. Um, and they come into our school, uh, reporters, journalists, producers that are still in the industry, they are coming in and being guest speakers and instructors. Um, it, it allows us so much uh, potential with internship placements. You can find almost any major, major media outlets and, and, and find opportunities there. Um, we have a lot of international connections and we're continuing to grow them. So uh, a really cool thing with our program once we resume travel is that uh, we've established in, in third year, uh, you can do an international exchange to one of 10 partner programs, which includes the UK, Denmark, Singapore, Australia. The cool thing about that is that you do a semester abroad, but students will pay Ryerson tuition, not international fees, which can be really, really expensive. Um, you can also uh, approach to do an internship uh, overseas. So we've had people intern in New York, in Doha, in, in London, England, um, and they've had just really wonderful, amazing experiences. So there are increasingly more opportunities to travel and to take a more kind of globalized view of journalism, which I think is really cool. Uh, number seven, grads get jobs. So uh, a journalism degree is very versatile. Uh, again, I mentioned that not everyone is going to come out of this and go into reporting, and that's totally fine. Um, you know, a lot of students, it, by the time they reach third year, are, are like, you know what, I, I really like certain aspects of this, you know, the content creation, the, um, the social media, um, other aspects may not be for me. But a journalism degree is so versatile. Uh, you know, things like high level research skills, the ability to use digital tools to make content, the ability to interview people and synthesize research and information. Those are all really highly sought after qualities and it could lead you to any number of jobs. And we've had graduates go to, you know, the film industry, uh, communications, they've work, gone to work in the government. Um, a lot of them go into work in design and marketing, uh, new media. Some of them got to start their own businesses. Uh, other, other, other students use this to their next degree, which is um, you know, doing a graduate degree or going to law school and medical school. Uh, there's a lot of potential you could do. Uh, there's a lot of potential you have when you have a journalism degree because the skills are so uh, versatile and, and in demand. Uh, the final reason I, I want to discuss is that... Um, you know, you're, you, you, you're a welcome cure as a student. And that's something that we've been really trying to emphasize as much as possible. As a school, more than ever, we're committed to fostering an inclusive, diverse learning experience. This is not just important to us as a school. It's important to us as people leading the next generation of journalists. Journalism really should represent uh, Canadian society. It should be a mirror of what's happening in, in our society and be representative of those experiences and um, those needs. So we want our student body to really reflect what Canada really is. Um, you know, uh, we, we, if you come to school here, you're gonna be challenged. It's a challenging program, right? You're gonna learn uh, essential skills um, and, and pick up uh, important knowledge. Uh, with that in mind though, we are still trying to help students as much as possible cultivate resiliency and, and take care of their mental health. That's a huge priority at the RSJ. And I'd say now more than ever, um, the pandemic has really, uh, you know, led to, um, you know, a lot of challenges for people, uh, both personal and professional, and, and we're very aware of that. And, and it's really our, uh, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's in our blood right now, really, to try and help people as much as possible, put them in the best position to succeed and something that we continue to carry forward. Um, you know, we're committed more than ever to uh, improving teaching and learning of Indigenous people's culture history and media coverage inspired by the uh, Truth and Reconciliation um, call. Uh, also with this, um, introducing more courses on uh, race and reporting and, and how race is covered in the media uh, in response to um, uh, uh, police brutality and, and uh, social injustice uh, that, that came to a head in the summer. Um, you know, so there are all sorts of ways in which we're really trying to cultivate a, a complete experience for students, uh, one that just really means um, you know, diversity and inclusivity and, and welcoming different perspectives. So in summation, just eight of my own personal reasons why I think, um, you know, coming to Ryerson is, is, is a good move if you're considering journalism. Once again, media capital of Canada, just there's so many advantages that come with that. Number two, we prioritize hands-on classes, practical learning. Number three, small class sizes where you get to know your instructors and each other. Four, uh, you know, professional level facilities and resources to make professional level content. Five, you have opportunities to get involved right away with so many campus publications and news outlets. Six, uh, we really do help you connect to the industry. Uh, it's a professional degree. We've got so many connections to professionals in, in, in the business. 
Um, number seven, it's a very versatile degree. So whether or not you choose to uh, continue to do reporting, uh, your, your degree can take you to some really interesting places. These are skills that are in demand. And number eight, um, you know, you are very welcome to come here. We, we really do encourage people of all walks of life from all perspectives to come because again, we want our student body to represent uh, what Canada really is. So uh, a big question is studying journalism right for you, you as the individual. And that's a difficult question. Everyone's got um, you know, a, a different response to this. I would say this, I always like to ask people a series of questions uh, to see whether journalism is something that they should consider. Um, and to me, uh, a really important question is, are you curious about anything and everything? Uh, curiosity is a huge driver of journalism. It, it's, you, it, it inspires people to ask questions and to find out more and to pass on that information to other people. So curiosity is a real, you know, I, I think it's a really important quality to have if you want to study journalism. Do you care about what's happening in your community and the world? Um, so, you know, do you, do you have interests, you know, outside of your immediate, uh, your immediate sphere, your immediate interests, you know, are, are, you, are you interested in what's happening to people outside of your own, um, your own little pocket of the world? Um, do you enjoy reading, listening, and watching media? Do you like getting creative and experimenting with programs and tools and ideas? I think this is an important question to ask yourself because um, with journalism, because technology changes so rapidly, we're always learning new tools, always learning new ways to do things. And if you are excited by the thought of being like a lifelong learner and always uh, being able to play with new programs and trying new things, that's a really cool program to get into. Do you enjoy collaborating with others and exploring different perspectives? Uh, to me, gone are the days when a reporter would come into work and take all day to write a story, file at six o'clock and go home. Um, it's a 24 seven endeavor now. And that means teamwork and it means um, sharing stories and, and tackling them together. And that means working with all different kinds of people. And if, you, if that's something that appeals to you, then I think journalism is a really cool uh, uh, possibility. Are you the type of person who can ask tough questions? So, uh, you know, this, it's important, again, the idea of holding institutions, governments, uh, corporations accountable. Um, I, I, think people, I think people need to be able to ask tough questions and be able to follow through and, and get the answers that they need. Um, because you have an audience to serve and this is what they're, they're, they're needing to get. Um, and finally, do you want to tell real stories about real people? I get this question a lot, you know, like I love English, I love writing, I love creative writing, would journalism be for me? And uh, if, if fiction and poetry are your thing, um, that's fantastic. I wouldn't necessarily recommend journalism for you because ultimately what journalism is, is real stories about real people. Um, it, it's really kind of based in uh, kind of nonfiction storytelling um, and, you know, to me, I think real life people are, are the most interesting characters I've ever encountered. And, uh, you know, to me, it's a real privilege to be able to tell those stories. And so that, that's why journalism is a fit for me. Um, so if you answered yes to some of those questions, we didn't really encourage you to, to look further and consider joining us. So here's a few admission details. Um, our, our kind of baseline admissions is this, you need uh, a minimum of six grade 12 URM courses. Um, you will need a minimum grade of 70% or higher in grade 12 English. English would be the uh, prerequisite uh, credit you would need. Um, typically successful applicants have an average overall grade in the mid to high 80s uh, that, that, that are accepted. Um, and once again, it's grades only uh, with no portfolio submission for 2021. We can talk a bit more of that if you like uh, during the Q&A portion. Uh, and for more information on applying to Google Ryerson School of Journalism, uh, you can come up to our website. There's all sorts of information on there um, you, uh, and, and, and visit, visit our website. We've got everything you need to, uh, to apply there. All right, so I'm gonna stop the presentation because I think we're going to switch into Q&A mode. Um, and I believe I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Janice Neal, who is the chair of our school. Uh, I can see her there. And she has uh, very kindly uh, lent her time to help uh, address any questions uh, the audience may have. Hey, Janice, you there? Hi. Hmm. Okay. Hey. I am. Hi. <laughs> How are I, just you need someone, I need someone with higher powers to be able to start my video. There we go. Oh, yeah, run, run okay. some good video problems. It sounds okay. Yeah. Here hey. Yeah. How are you doing? Hi. 
Adrian, that was a great presentation. Thank you. I really, I mean, I think it's really valuable that you're you were talking about the range of the range of activities that uh, and the range of careers that journalism can can lead to. Because I, I I think sometimes you know students come in thinking it's just kind of one thing, but we you know cover the cover the the foundation pretty quickly, and then there's a whole whole range of activities and and. Um, and lots of uh, fabulous places. It, oh, the places you will go <laughs> yeah, with a journalism degree. So Janice, I, I see that we've got a bunch of questions in the chat um, that I think people would love to have addressed. Do you mind if I read some out to you? Yeah. Okay, so we have one question. After a couple of years in the program, is it possible to look more into the sports brands of journalism? So I think this is a question that we get a lot. Uh, we have people that really are interested in sports reporting, um, and uh, we do offer some sports reporting. Um, there's also other avenues they could look at at Ryerson. What's your, what's your take on that? Uh, absolutely. So there, uh, we teach sports journalism. Um, we, we have lots of opportunities for students within, you know, within the program to choose uh, their own assignments. So if it's a day when they are doing reporting uh, or they're producing a documentary or whatever, then they can, um, then they can pretty much, you know, tailor, you know, tailor make it. I'm, I'm teaching podcasting this fall. And I think there are probably, uh, let's see, let me think probably six or seven students who are producing, producing, um, pilot podcasts on sports so so if you have an interest in sports you will definitely find other students who are who are who are as passionate probably as you are about telling those stories absolutely and if I might add to uh beyond the coursework you can work for many of these campus outlets covering sports and and being uh, really involved in that as well so there's so many opportunities where you very much could branch out and become a sports reporting specialist we have lots of students have gone on to work professionally for CBC Sports, Sportsnet, um, TSN, they're all over the place. The Thank athletic. you very much for the question. The athletic, yeah, very mm-hmm. much. Um, okay, another question. Would a minor in criminology and a major in journalism be useful for investigative journalism? Wow. That's intriguing. I, haven't, I, haven't, I don't think I've filled that one before. Yeah, no, I think that I think that is a fantastic idea. You know, so with a you know, journalism would be your your major, and there are I think there are about seventy different uh, different programs that you could do as a minor. And in fact, we have some students who do two or three minors. So they might do criminology and, you know, and maybe sociology uh, as well. So however you kind of bundle up your courses and you can make those decisions throughout, uh, throughout the program. I think criminology would be, would be fantastic with, uh, with journalism. Excellent. Uh, another question, if I wanted to work at CBC uh, to do the traffic, for example, would this program be good for that? So, uh, right, the, the, uh, the doing the traffic, I think being, being on air as well is probably something that, that is appealing. Certainly, we, uh, we, we have lots of opportunities, um, I think, uh, from throughout the entire program to, to be on air. I mentioned, you know, I mentioned the podcasting, but we also have, you know, news programs we have, and we have television broadcasting, and uh, we have people who can coach you and, and be, uh, of course, on air and to be comfortable. And uh, Adrian was mentioning the extracurricular activities. You know, uh, Ryerson has a great campus radio station, and um, uh, lots of lots of students get their own programs or they do the news. So anything that's kind of giving you experience of uh, of being being on air, being able to think, being able to think on your feet, uh, is uh, is great experience. Absolutely. Moving on. Uh, can you please describe on-campus recruiting? Uh, do companies and organizations come to the school to hire grads? So uh, I guess uh, career fairs, networking, that kind of stuff, um, specific to the news media, perhaps? Uh, I mean, we have some employers who, 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 can, who come just that one time a year. But, but um, you know, quite frankly, I think uh, our recruiting is much more, you know, robust and it's continuous. We, we send out uh, to, our, to our alumni, we send out uh, two emails every week with, uh, with job opportunities that, uh, that employers and, you know, and many of them are alumni of our program that they, that they want, they send to us so that we send them out to people who are on our, on our list, um, uh, in our, in our, in our pool. Um, you know, as Adrian mentioned, uh, you know, uh, most of the students tend to do internships and that's a great way to, to, um, you know, assess whether you are, you know, a right fit for a certain position or a certain company. And those often lead into work and, uh, and job opportunities uh, as well. 
Yeah, and uh, just to also point out that um, there are very active student unions and student organizations within the Writers and School of Journalism that often um, host their own sort of networking events and professional connection events as well. So uh, there's, it, it happens on all, on, on all fronts for sure. Um, another question, if I was interested in entertainment reporting, would I be able to do that here? Well, I think we love entertainment. We, we absolutely love entertainment. <laughs> uh, certainly Toronto is a good place. Yeah, Toronto yeah, is definitely. a good place to be. Uh, and, um, you know, like I mentioned earlier about sports, that, that you, get a, you get a lot of freedom to choose the, choose the stories that you do. And you get, so you get guidance about how, about how to find those sources and, and where to look for and where to look for ideas. So. Uh, so, you know, one of the, um, one of our alum is, um, uh, does uh, entertainment. He's actually on the morning show, one of the morning shows at, uh, at Global now, but entertainment is kind of, uh, is kind of his, his beast. So he, he learned his television skills and, uh, and again, kind of on air on our skills while he was at, uh, while he was at journal school and eventually went into entertainment. Yeah, I'll, I'll add this, which is just like, if you're ever wondering about kind of subject specific questions, like, um, oh, can I cover this sort of subject and cover this sort of subject? You absolutely can, because to me, like journalism, uh, the way our courses are set up, the way our, our news outlets are set up, if you have stories to pitch, if you want to cover different aspects of something, you know, be it politics, be it sports, be it, um, be it entertainment, uh, there are many, many avenues for you to do it. It may not be specifically laid out in like a, we don't like necessarily have an entertainment reporting course, but almost any course you do, assignments that you're given, stories you can cover, it's often your choice as to what you cover. And so if you really want to cultivate that uh, expertise or interest in, in that subject area, you can absolutely do that over the four years of your, of your schooling. Uh, we do have an arts journal. Yeah. We do have arts journalism. So you have arts journalism, do. right. Yeah, so we yeah. do have a course on it. Okay. Um, yeah, we have like too many courses, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, question. If I decide that perhaps studio work is not for me, are there specializations in newspaper writing? What are the specific specializations? I kind of love that question because uh, we, you know, I come from newspapers, uh, um, you know, and it's, one, it's, it's the one medium that seems to kind of get the most um, oh, are they going to survive? You know, this is like old, an old way of doing things. Uh, however, I, I, I wonder, do you feel like I do that newspapers are just as vital now as, as they used to be? Absolutely. And, and, you know, and uh, students start off in, you know, in their first semester thinking about writing text, you know, so whether that is print or whether that is online, it is, uh, it is, um, you know, the focus kind of from the beginning and adding in uh, the other um, platforms um, as, um, as, as you go along. Uh, students in, in their, in their final year, uh, choose to work on uh, the Ryersonian, which is a, um, a, a news website uh, and has published a newspaper. Back to the extracurriculars, uh, Adrian mentioned, because there's an, actually another newspaper on, on campus called The Eye Opener that students volunteer to work on. And um, they are publishing newspapers. They're publishing two or three uh, a semester right now, even though the campus is a little quiet, but they are, they are publishing papers. So we see for both papers, we see the audience kind of being larger than, than the actual campus itself. But there are, there are definitely instructors who've got ink still pulsating through their veins uh, <laughs> at the school. Uh, so, yeah. uh, so you would find definitely comfort with, you know, comfort yeah. with that. And perhaps another way of looking at that question too, is that um, if, you're, if you're thinking about like how, if we have like a certain kind of specialization as like, if you're like a broadcaster versus a newspaper reporter versus, we don't have kind of um, uh, um, specifications like that, because I think part of the point of, of the Ryerson journalism degree is that it's a multi-platform degree. You will learn how to do a bit of everything and be very, very versatile when you come out. Um, so there, there's no kind of designation that you get that your newspaper. In fact, we were kind of taking the opposite approach where we really encourage our students to learn to do um, everything. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to continue doing studio work. It just means that you'll be capable of it if, if you ever need to. Um, but yes, once well, again, in fact yeah. I was going to say, you know, I can I can point to the time that it changed when in uh, 2007, one of our students was uh, was being recruited to mm. go to work for the Globe and Mail. And uh, and he told us later that they told him that they hired him uh, because he shot video. And in mm. fact, uh, his name is Josh Wingrove. In fact, he um, when, the parliament, when the parliament building was um, yeah. Parliament Hill was under siege um, uh, four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Josh kind of whipped out his, you know, his his cell phone and shot it. And in fact, kind of has the only video and audio content 
content of that um, of that incident because he had the instincts um, that he that he that he did because he took you know took those courses. Uh, he's now a Washington correspondent with uh, Bloomberg News. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, so he uh, so it's but you know so and it was about that time that our program, which used to stream people, so he used to just kind of go into either magazine, newspaper, or broadcast that we started we started uh, taking down those walls or silos as they used to call them and and uh, so you can you can definitely choose preferences but it's really important to us that uh, that every person graduating of our program is as familiar with one you know with one type of journalism as they are with uh, with the others absolutely here's a question does critiquing fall under journalism so I, I suppose reviews opinion writing uh, commentary, Absolutely, we have a course on opinion and uh, on opinion writing and, and column writing, and that's what uh, and that's what the course is about. Should say that uh, you can't take that course until you're in third year because because uh, it's important that you learn what journalism is about. Important that you learn how spouting off opinions that <laughs> may uh, may get you in you know it may get you in, in legal trouble or harm in other ways or cause harm. You know it's really important that you understand. It's really important that you understand that. So there's lots of opportunity to to uh, to develop to develop those skills. Uh, and the arts course that I mentioned is also. Um, um, uh, there is also critique writing, uh, so being able to, you know, cr uh, write critiques of, of performances or film or music is part of that course as well. Absolutely, and I think it's a really important question because uh, I, I kind of mentioned fake news and, and you know misleading information being circulated kind of more than ever. I can see there's a lot kind of blending of, of, of lines between you know opinion versus reporting. Um, and I don't think that's to say that journalism is without perspective, but it is perspective that is um, supported by by you know real research and real data and and I think um, you know real real logic. So. Um, the idea that there's never any kind of opinion writing in journalism, I think you, you've, you know, so we, we teach, we teach those courses, but we teach you how to do it. And I think a way with integrity and with real, um, kind of with, with real truth to it. Uh, moving on, would Condé Nast be a possible internship placement for a journalism student? I uh, yeah, absolutely I believe so. Yep. Why, why not? not? Yeah, there's your answer. Um, are there monetary acceptance offers for journalism programs? Uh, this is a two-part question. So let's start with the first one. Uh, money, 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 money. Are right. there, are there, so, do we need to get money? Uh, so the university has, uh, has a number of awards that it, uh, that it gives for um, upon acceptance. Once you're in the School of Journalism, uh, and actually even in the first month that you're in, uh, you can apply for a handful of awards that are, that are uh, specifically for uh, students who are coming into the program. And then after you finish your first year, we have, uh, we have about $180,000 in awards uh, that we give out every single year to students who are in the program for either for uh, it's a, a various things. Some of them are for high grades in a course. Some of them are uh, for cert writing certain kinds or producing certain kinds of stories, best documentary, you know, best sports, things like that. And, uh, and those are available um, all four years of the program and the two years of the master's program uh, as well. Yeah, you can, you can win cash money by writing <laughs> stories. What 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 are the school you know, does that right? That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what career options are there with this degree? And yeah, I went into it a little bit. Um, and then because you've um, you've been at the school longer than I have, uh, you've you've seen all sorts of students come and go and, and do interesting careers. Um, I, I talked about the versatility of this degree. Uh, you know, here's a question for you: What what are some of the more interesting jobs you've seen people uh, uh, get with uh, having having graduated from this program? Uh, so. Well, first of all, a couple of students have gone to medical school mm -hmm. so who want to and they and they uh, now work as doctors, but they um, find opportunities to uh, to commute to use their communication skills. That's something so that, and so needed now these days. That is, yeah, yeah. Um, we we've had, uh, you know, a number of students go to interesting um, nonprofits or NGOs. So they work you know, around the, you know, they work around the world, work in, you know, they were traveling around the world with, uh, with, um, 
with organizations producing communications for the public to do fundraising or internal internal communications. Uh, we've had students uh, who've gone into careers that uh, that have really nothing necessarily to do with journalism, but it's you know they know how to write, they know how to take. You learn how to take a lot of information that might seem kind of jumbled or really boring, really boring, you know, maybe long reports, and they know how to 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 uh, to boil it down to, into something that's much uh, that's much more interesting. Um, lots of people have gone into various, you know, into we've mentioned podcasting, into documentary, uh, into performing. We have some people who've gone into acting and performing careers, hosting uh, breakfast television shows, um, and uh, a lot go into you know a lot go or a number go into grad school. We've had a lot of people go to law school. Uh, that seems to be you know a favorite or onto master's programs. So. In medical school, uh, which uh, which I which I mentioned for a couple of students, so um, you know I, I I I I can think of we've had a lot of we've had a lot of graduates over seventy years, and yeah. we graduate uh, program and we graduate you know about one hundred and twenty people a year, so lots of interesting lots of interesting careers. Go onto LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. and uh, search uh, search Ryerson journalism, and you'll see uh, you'll see. Yeah. Who comes that's up? A good, that's a good tip. That's a good tip. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's, let's see if you have some more tips here. What are some skills that would benefit my learning experience in the journalism program? Hmm, some skills that would benefit. Now, I, I mean, do, do, I'm wondering if they mean to get into the program or to participate in while they are there. What, what, how about we, we, can, we can answer both, you know, okay. and, and both versions of that. Um, so as a high schooler right now or, or whatever your situation is, um, what are some things you could do to um, kind of maybe hit the ground running when you when you come to J school? Uh, what, what would you say in your experience has been something really useful to help students prepare for like the rigors of, of uh, journalism school? Hmm. Uh, you know, I think, look, the most important thing is to be a curious person. So mm -hmm. how do you prepare for that? You know, uh, give yourself lots of experience of being in situations where you're asking people questions. Um, uh, thinking about how to ask people questions that allows people to give you long answers uh, mm. rather than yes, no, you know, closed ended questions. Um, you know, interviewing, I think interviewing is kind of at the heart of what we do, absolutely yeah. what we do. And, and, uh, and being curious about things that, uh, that, and finding a way to be interested in something that you thought you would have no interest in whatsoever. Mm. That is, uh, uh, I think that is a good, a good skill to, a good skill to sharpen. And uh, while Absolutely. we will teach you interviewing, for instance, you know, believe me, you can you can be doing you can be doing interviews. You can be like sixty minutes uh, interview or doing them for your whole life, and still feel that you want to keep working on it. Still keep sharpening those skills. Absolutely, I, I, interviewing is a fantastic answer. Uh, I'd also say uh, on the kind of more technical side. Um, if you have some familiarity with, uh, you know, basic video, photo editing, audio editing, uh, you will be able to hit the ground running really well when you, when you come to the program, because there's a big emphasis on visual and audio storytelling uh, with the program, because that's how people like to consume their content these days and uh, video packages and audio. Thank you for that question. Um, okay, here's another question. Since you need to apply with a Ryerson account, does that mean you must be accepted before applying for an RSJ scholarship? Yes. Yeah, you have to be a student in the program. You have to be a student in the program before you apply for an RSJ scholarship. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, so someone's someone's gone in and already looked that up, and they've already <laughs> realized they have to do that. That's a uh, that's a good sign. Cool. <laughs> good sign that you went that you went in and, uh, and and dug around to try to find your own answer. Yeah, uh, there's a question I'm not that familiar with this term. So, uh, are students applying via OUAC 105 eligible for entrance scholarships? Uh, so, uh, I would imagine, uh, I, I those, so again, those are going to be university wide. The reason yeah. I'm hesitating is because, because we don't really, we don't have anything to do with the, um, with, uh, looking at the criteria or making, uh, making, uh, selections about, uh, about the university awards. However, I think someone from, I think Jake is, uh, is popping on and Jake is going to tell you. Yes, you can. Hi there. I, uh, I just wanted to flag that we do have folks from uh, admissions and from uh, student financial assistance and departments like that uh, working in the tech side of the Q&A. So if, 
if you two don't uh, know the answer to any, just feel free to skip it, and we'll uh, we'll be answering those in the back end as well. So right on. Uh, the the answer is it depends on the award. Some of them are eligible to 105 applicants, and some are not. And it could depend if you're a 105 applicant from inside Ontario or outside Ontario. So all, all of that is dependent. So I'm going to let the uh, the experts uh, weigh in on that one. That was all I wanted to say. Thanks. Can I um, can I also the one how early how how early will acceptances be put out? Uh, toss that one over to uh, the admissions people too. Yeah, absolutely. Those ones are uh, so it it really depends. Uh, it, again, it depends on sort of how early uh, we we get your reports of your grades and things like that. The earliest earliest acceptances we we ever send out are in uh, around December. Um, but the bulk of our, and those are based on preliminary grades. So the, the bulk of our decisions will go out, uh, around like April, May, that kind of time frame, like in the, in the later kind of spring season. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Jan, this is a really good question here. What's the biggest difference between Ryerson's, uh, bachelor of journalism program in comparison to a college's three-year diploma in journalism? aside from the difference in degree. So is there any kind of difference between those educational experiences, do you think? Well, I think uh, the fact that it is a degree from Ryerson is, um, is significant. You are, uh, you are pursuing journalism um, while journalism is making up about between 60% and 75% of the courses that you are taking every year. Um, you, uh, you will also have the opportunity to take electives in, um, in as we've talked about, in minors in, um, in other programs. In fact, we insist that you take courses that are building your general knowledge about how, about how the world uh, is going. Um, you know, the four-year program, you're, you have, you know, more opportunities to build your skills as you as you go along, and we are, you know, we are confident that at the end of those four years, you will have a really good degree. Uh, in uh, and if you've chosen to minor you or or in the electives you've taken, and as well as in journalism, um, I should tell you we have a we have an arrangement with um, with one college, uh, and uh, that's a formal arrangement. But we do have students who transfer into uh, into our program after they have either completed a diploma elsewhere, or if they're in the process of, of, uh, of applying um, or completing it and uh, and they transfer into our program and um, um, you know we have we have ways of, of giving of, of looking at the courses that you've taken and giving you credit for getting you credit for those so that you can kind of finish your four-year degree a little bit faster but um, uh, but uh, our specific programs with Sheridan College which is a two-year program and then students transfer uh, can transfer pretty seamlessly into our program as long as they've had good grades. Thank you. Uh, here's an interesting question. Um, what benefits come with continuing with the graduate program? Do career opportunities decrease with the undergraduate program? So I wonder if the question is, um, you know, maybe if you do your journalism degree as a bachelor and then you also do the master's degree, is it, maybe that's the question. Right. Um, so we don't, take, we don't take students into our master's program if they have an undergraduate degree in journalism. So Adrian graduated from the master's program and your first degree was in? Uh, it was a double political major science. in political science and philosophy, yes. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, so but, but Adrian did, did journalism as an undergraduate student. So the master's program is a, it's what's called a professional program. So it is, um, you are immersed in, in, uh, in learning about uh, news gathering and reporting and researching and you participate in, um, in some of the same uh, senior in your final year and some of the same courses that uh, working alongside some of the fourth year undergraduate students, you have an internship um, and you produce a big piece of journalism at the end called a master's research project. It is not an advanced degree in, uh, in the sense that it's not building on what uh, the four year degree uh, students in the four year degree program would have. Yeah, very, very true. Um, how much opportunity is there to take courses in other fields? Now, that's an excellent question. So yeah, how, how much can you kind of uh, look at courses not related to journalism? So uh, I think 40% uh, of your courses. Uh, so if roughly you take 40 courses in a four year degree at, uh, at Ryerson, you could take 10, maybe even, maybe even a couple of more. Um, 
uh, in other in other subjects. Although some students take more than forty credits, so you can you know you can kind of play around. So there's um, there is you know there are a lot of opportunities to take courses in uh, in almost every single you know almost every single field, uh, every single other program at, at Ryerson that's not a dedicated program. Okay. Uh, well, we need to come to this program with some sort of skills. Hmm. What do you think? Uh, uh, I think this program is designed to teach you from the ground up, no matter what your skill level coming in. Um, so all the technical stuff, how to shoot really good photos and videos, how to edit them together, how to report, how to do research, how to write stories in, 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 in a concise, effective way. All, the, all those things we will teach you. Um, there are things you can bring into the program that will help you immensely. And I think Janice mentioned, you know, one thing, which is just curiosity, you know, like this real sense of like wanting to understand the world, how things work. Um, you know, uh, I think you know, we'll teach you everything you need to know. Uh, we all start from the ground up and, and build, build up that way. Um, but you know, to me, it, you can almost treat it like a skill, but curiosity can really be honed, right? So if you get in the habit of understanding current affairs, what's happening around the world, what's happening in your communities, uh, asking questions, you know, talking to people, calling up your, um, your, your, your city council person and, and, and asking questions about, you know, this or that, get in the practice of asking questions and, and trying to find answers to things. That's a great skill to bring into the, uh, into the program. We structure uh, our program, especially in first year, to um, to allow to so some of the technical workshops um, uh, in terms of video and audio and uh, web, you know, building websites and social media. We structure it in such a way that if you come in with with some knowledge, then you um, you can advance those skills. And if you come in with not necessarily knowing anything, then you can participate in the workshop. So they're they're kind of a little, you know, they're well, quite we're quite flexible. We want everyone to end up at the same point, but if you come in with certain things, it's not like you're going to be sitting there in class bored out of your mind that someone is talking about how to, uh, you know, how to uh, record on your, you know, iPhone for, you know, for three hours that we're, you know, we're not going to do that. It is, um, we, uh, we give you, uh, I guess, the responsibility for kind of uh, deciding where you are um, with any given, with any given skill and then moving up from that, building on that. All right. Uh, let's see. What is the probability of getting a job right after graduating? On average, how long does it take to get a job with this degree? That was a question that I had when I came to the school. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's, that's, that's hard to say, right? Um, so much of this is dependent on the job market, which is just all over the place sometimes, isn't it? So I think, look, I think... Um, there are uh, opportunities for students even before they leave the program to to have work. So whether uh, whether their internship leads into part time uh, part time work, even more than part time, sometimes it leads into like working thirty hours a week, uh, or other opportunities that they um, that that you've had a, you know previous summer job that has led into led into something that uh, that uh, I think you know most of our students are finding themselves engaged in what they want to be engaged in. Pretty, you know, pretty soon after, pretty soon after graduation, and uh, and it may be a place you may find yourself in a place that you never imagined when you were in first year, second year, or third year. It's you know, they we've, we've talked a lot about uh, the different paths that uh, that people take. Yeah, uh, you know, speaking from personal experience and also working with students who are recent graduates. Uh, you know, they, they, they often quickly find, yeah, different types of jobs. Uh, it may not be full-time right away. Um, it, it could be a combination of um, some part-time gigs and uh, some contract jobs that, you know, they kind of um, move to. Um, but, you know, actually one kind of cool way is that if you just kind of follow our Twitter feed, we're often retweeting when grads announce they are oh, in, in some personal news. I've, I'm now the new, you know, reporter here or, or reporter there. Um, so if you follow the RSJ on Twitter, um, you can kind of track like how people are doing. And also, again, um, you know, Janice points out that we often retweet um, job opportunities for people. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's we're not going to lie, like it, it can be a very tough time in industry. We have no idea how uh, COVID is affecting um, how employment will be when it's time for, for you to step out into the world. Um, but I, I remain optimistic because I think, again, these skills are in demand for almost any sort of career 
you could um, could think of. And um, you know, there the the, we're, we're, uh, the the opportunities for all different kinds of media outlets are are actually more than they have been before. You know, so maybe mainstream news outlets are reconfiguring the way they do things, but I think there are all sorts of new startups and and all all, all sorts of new enterprises all the time that are that are popping up that um, could really value your your perspectives. Uh, I think we're running out of time here. Maybe one more question. As someone who wants to pursue photojournalism, are there many opportunities for visual journalism, specifically photojournalism? So uh, someone who really wants to, mm-hmm. to do photojournalism, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have, uh, you know, photography is built into our program and you can pursue it in various, you know, various concentrations throughout the whole four years of the program. Uh, we also, within our faculty, there's also um, the uh, School of Image Arts, which also offers, and so there are a number of courses you could take there as, uh, as electives. And, um, and also, um, also RTA also, I think, has some, some courses. So between, our, between the schools that are in our faculty, we are, we are really rich with a lot of different visual opportunities, different ways of, um, different ways of conceiving, uh, conceiving the subjects and producing the visual journalism or visual images. Yeah. Great. Uh, Jake, I think we're running out of time. Uh, can we answer these last two questions and we'll, we'll, we'll peace out? Yeah, well, I was going to say we can uh, we can sort of address those in the in the text side of things because uh, we can we can leave the room open for for those answers to filter through. So, I think uh, we're pretty much done here. Is there anything that you two wanted to say to our attendees before we sign off? Oh, you're giving you giving a couple of reporters the, the the floor. That's a risky thing. <laughs> uh, Jan, well, Janice is the chair of our school, uh, and and I, actually, on a personal note, I think her leadership throughout the major adjustments we've had to make through uh, online learning has been, uh, she's been so supportive and incredible. Um, And, you know, I I think it it, it goes without saying, like we're recognizing that this is a bit of an odd year and that our hope is that, you know, if you were to come to our school, uh, we kind of back to how we traditionally run things, which is, you know, in-person practical hands-on training. Um, but yeah, Janice, maybe, uh, maybe have a, a thought on that. Well, and to, you know, to, to that end, we, um, you know, we realized months, we realized just weeks into the pandemic that we were most likely going to be offering online courses this year. And uh, I'll, I'll admit at first, we kind of panicked. We are a school about hands-on learning. How do you do that online? And then we said, wait a minute, journalism is being produced all around us. People are producing the national newscast kind of out of their one bedroom apartment. That's one of our alum, uh, alumni actually, you know, and they're doing it. So journalism is being produced all around us. It is absolutely crucial that we offer all of our regular courses and we find out, you know, and we, we find the best ways of offering them with the, with the values. We pride ourselves on our teaching. We pride ourselves on our small classes and how are we going to make that work in uh in uh, teaching and uh, teaching remotely. So, um, and we've learned a lot along the way. And it's really important that the students who are in our program now are learning journalism skills, how to do journalism remotely, because when they graduate, um, even if life's kind of going back to, you know, normal pre-pandemic, there's still lots of, we're finding lots of ways of adapting and lots of ways of doing things in a lot, sometimes, some ways a lot better uh, now. And those skills are going to be, employers are gonna to want to know that, that journalism students and journalism grads have got those skills. Thanks very much. Thank you. No, that, yeah, I don't thank know you. That. Thanks, thank thank, you. thanks for your time, everybody. Really appreciate it. We love asking questions because we're journalists, but we're also <laughs> more than happy to answer them anytime. So yeah, visit our school website and, uh, you know, send, send an email if you have any more questions. Okay. All right. Okay. I, uh, I don't know if you two saw in the Q and a, someone sent in a question specifically to say, thank you too, for having great energy and answering all these questions. And <laughs> thank, thank yeah. the miracle of coffee. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's really, that's really, uh, that's really where that energy comes from. Yeah. I have to send bags of it every month to Adrian. Yes, no, that's part of my that's part of my salary and, and remuneration. I, I miss balls. <laughs> I miss balls. Me too. Oh my gosh. Oh, I, sorry. I should add a ninth thing to why you should come to Ryerson. We've got the best food options in any university <laughs> in, in, in in Ontario. It's, it's food and it's, coffee. Oh, it's so yeah. good. Okay, yeah. we gotta go. All right. See you later. Okay. Alrighty. Bye. Bye.